Somewhere in the dark and nasty regions where nobody goes stands an ancient castle. Deep within this dank and uninviting place lives Burke. Hello! Overworked servant of the thing upstairs. Burke, feed me! But that's nothing compared to the horrors that lurk beneath the trap door. For there is always something down there. In the dark, waiting to come out. Once again, welcome to another Lemon64 play guide and review. This time we'll be checking out The Trapdoor, which was developed by Macmillan Software and published by Piranha in 1986. This is of course based on the children's TV show, which was released in 1984 and featured, I think, 25 episodes of uh, animation, maybe even a claymation, but certainly a stop motion animation of a guy walking around the castle and finding beasts underneath the trap door. On the title screen you can see it's fairly plain and linear with no background, but we can redefine the keys by pressing the R key, as I'm trying to do now you can see D is for drop and T is for tip. After that we can press the S key to start and we can choose a learner burke or a super burke. Let's go for the learner burke for this. We begin in the castle, and we are Burke, we are the caretaker of this place, and we're responsible for feeding the thing upstairs. Burke, get me a can of worms! So, first thing to do is to get a can of worms. You can see this is the storeroom, and there are lots of items in the storeroom. By tipping, we can tip out a packet of seeds from whatever this may be. It looks particularly like a jar, and we can lob that onto the ground. We can also find a basket here, and by, again, pressing the tip key, we can tip that out, and that reveals a bullet, which we shall need later on. At the beginning of the game, it gives us lots of time to prepare for the missions, and it gives us some time to pick up these seeds. What do we need seeds for? Well, we need those for a later mission, and if you plant the seeds early on, it means that we have lots and lots of time when that later mission comes up. There are five missions in the game. First of all, we need to collect a can of worms. Then it's a random mission. It could be fried eggs eyeball crush or boiled slimes and then in mission 5 we have to clean up the entire castle and then the thing will drop down a safe onto our heads which contains our wages but we won't be able to get that far in this particular playthrough. The most important thing for the can of worms is to collect the can so let's pick that up off the shelf that doesn't contain anything but it will contain worms very shortly let's collect that and take that to the trap door and you can see bony the skeleton skull will give us some help and drut will bounce around eating worms and get in our way When we've collected those worms, we can open the trap door again and hopefully a few more will fall out. And I think there is a set number of worms that pop out of that trap door. And if you aren't quick enough, Drut will collect those for you and gobble them up. So you really can't waste time. Let's try again. And you need at least two worms to complete the mission. Three to get a well done and four worms will gain us a congratulations. So let's see how many worms we can get and steal off Drut before he gets his chops anywhere near those. And it's pretty difficult as you can see, but hopefully by moving in the face of the worm he will collect it by pulling down on the controller. And that's our 
third worm of the four collected. You can see a bar on the very right hand side of the screen, that's the thing's patience meter, and you can see lots and lots of patience in a very slow meter at this point, it's fairly yellow, and you can see a bonus, 12,000 is the bonus point that we can pick up if we deliver the kind of worms right now, but that will tick down as the thing loses patience. You can see a trap on the roof, that's a crusher, and we'll need to use the crusher a bit later on. We can also visit the cellar at this point, and this contains slimes. And slimes are a menace, not least because you can't collect those unless the eyeballs appear right in front of us. And having done so, we can walk towards those and pull down on the controller, and Bert should automatically pick those up. The hard part is tracking down the slimes, and once the eyeballs disappear, they will then relocate to a different part of that cellar. We've grabbed one, let's leg it out of here, and what can we do with a slime? Well, when the thing asks us for boiled slimes a bit later on, we'll need to put all these slimes into a cauldron. Then we'll need to boil that cauldron and send the whole thing up to the thing. That takes time, and collecting those slimes can take anywhere between 5 seconds and 10 hours, so because it takes so long to collect those things, I'm going to take the first one to the cauldron early, and that will save us some time later. You can see I've pushed the cauldron against the far wall, and unfortunately we cannot drop items directly into the cauldron by standing next to it, but we can drop items into the cauldron from here. That's our first slime collected, and we still need one more worm from the thing to get a tremendously well done from this very first mission. We still have lots of time remaining, so let's pick up these seeds and let's move on to the next screen. Fast forwarding that a little bit, and when we tip out the seeds onto the floor, we'll find three eyeballs. And the next problem is where do you put that packet of seeds where it won't get in our way? If you put it on the steps, we can't get out. If you put it in front of the plant pot, we can't plant the eyeball. And if we put it behind the eyeball, we can't pick those up. So let's just put it over here for now. And so one of the bugbears of this game strikes itself early on, that's the 3D aspect. It's pretty hard to line yourself up with the 3D at the best of times, and in this game there are maybe five layers of it to negotiate in any room. These eyeballs I'm planting now are for the eyeball crush that we'll need to get a little bit later on, and once those plants have grown, they'll grow an eyeball which we'll need to crush, and we'll go through the missions a little bit later, for now we're still on the can of worms, and we've still got at least 50% of the time remaining. So now that those plants are growing and we can hear those growing in the background we can now run as fast as we can speeding up the footage again and let's try and find a few more worms fortunately if Drut gets in our way we cannot pick him up and he'll get in our way and that's pretty annoying and once we've collected a certain amount of worms or at least exhausted the ones from the trapdoor no more will spawn and at that point you know that you've wasted your chance to get the fourth one so let's drop it into the dumb waiter and flick that button that will take it up to the thing and if we collected enough worms that should be a mission complete. Lovely worms, well done Buck! At this point the thing's belly is full, but it won't be long before it gives us another mission. Look, I want some fried eggs! If we pick up Barney, he'll give us some extra information, and for fried eggs we'll need a pan. 
So let's collect that and take that to the trap door. Also for the fried eggs we'll need a bullet and if you remember the bullet is hiding behind the basket and the basket is in front of the jaw you can see in the background. So let's try to move the cauldron out of the way, pick up the basket and that should reveal the bullet which we can use on this particular mission. We don't want to drop anything into the cauldron, particularly the basket at this stage. The basket is used to collect the eyeballs and the joy you can see is to collect the slimes the cauldron is where we put the slimes and there's one slime in there already and the glass that we'll need later on is for the eyeball crush we can now drop hopefully this bullet onto the trap door but first we'll need to get the monster out of it that we need to fire the bullet into so let's put the bullet down here for now and we can't flick the switch because the tray is in the way so let's move the pan and let's move the pan to the back wall and then hopefully we can release the trapdoor in the trapdoor we'll find lots of things lurking down there there is a chicken there is this guy that jumps around and there is this guy with one eye which has a flamethrower and so the chicken will need to get the eggs the thing bouncing around will need to use for the eyeball crush and the thing with the flamethrower is for the boiled slimes later on now we've got the chicken out we can put the bullet onto the trap door and fire the bullet into that chicken it should lay an egg again if there are any worms in our way they'll block our progress that's annoying as is the 3d aspect of this game and if we don't hurry up, we're going to miss it. And yes, there it is. We've missed the chance to shoot the chicken. Let's try again. And missed it completely. And you might notice if Drut lands in the trap door, he will climb out. And fast forward in this footage. Let's try again to get that chicken. If we are quick to close the trap door, the bullet will be safe. And now we have to grab the pan as quickly as possible, chase after that chicken. And by maneuvering that pan underneath the chicken, hopefully we'll be able to catch the egg that it is laying right now on the next screen. That's one out of the four eggs completed. We can collect two eggs for a minimum, three eggs for a well done, and four eggs for a very well done. And that's the first one completed. Unfortunately, we'll still have to wait for that chicken to fly around. And so let's fast forward this footage and try that again. I think it's a great effect when the chicken's eyeballs are popping out. But you can see we are on the wrong level here. We're standing right in the foreground. And the chicken is... A the middle of the room so in this case we'll not collect the egg not collecting the egg because of the stupid 3d aspects of this game is annoying but that's one egg wasted let's fast forward and try to get the other two A good tip is to stand by that fire, whatever it is, the range on the back wall and the auger, whatever it may be, that will cook eventually these fried eggs. So we've now got two in the pan, let's get the third one. And it can take some time for this chicken to spit out those eggs. That's the third one, so we can now put that onto the range and cook those eggs because once the four have been used up from the chicken it will then refuse to deliver us any more eggs no matter how much we fire bullets into that thing and as you can see I've missed if by accident the bullet disappears into the trapdoor you can still get eggs out of the chicken by using drut and putting drut onto the trapdoor and firing those into the chicken and 
If that isn't possible because Drut isn't on the screen, you can always collect Boney, place Boney onto the trapdoor, fire Boney into the chicken, and hopefully the eyeballs will pop out and give us another egg. Unfortunately, that's Boney down the trapdoor, and that has not given us another egg because it's already given us the four already. So, with time running out, we can now open that trapdoor, and that monster should disappear down there. And that's how you get rid of the monster at the end of the level. It gives us a bit more time so that we can mess about collecting things for the other items. But right now, let's collect the pan, and let's put that on the stove and get that cooking. After a certain amount of time, the eggs will cook, and having cooked, the pan will be red hot. But that gives us a bit of time, and well, let's try to get rid of the chicken in the meantime and clean up this level. You can see the pan sizzling away and it will turn red eventually when it's cooked and one of the jokes in this game you'll pick up the pan it won't be too hot you'll drop it and you'll have to wait for that to cool down again that's one of the few funny jokes in this game and it's quite funny and that happens to you so let's dump the eggs down that's three fried eggs for the thing ready and waiting Put those on the dumb waiter, service with a smile, and now we can flick that switch, and hopefully that will keep the thing happy and give us a few more points as well. A fair try, Burke, none off eggs! Not enough eggs, unfortunately, says the thing. We only got three out of the four. So we're now up to 2,390 points. And when the thing makes up its mind from the random items, we'll also get some more points on the table and hopefully more score. Book, I want boiled slimes! Luckily we're in the basement collecting those slimes and we need four slimes in the, the cauldron which is in the storeroom in order to complete this mission. So whilst you see me doing that I'll just tell you that Willie Rushton was the voice of many of the characters in the original TV cartoon, including Burke and Barney and The Thing, and Willie Rushton, well, he co-founded Private Eye, the satirical newspaper, and he also appeared on many satirical quizzes, like What's My Line, and Call My Bluff, and I'm Sorry, I Haven't a Clue, and Nick Shaplet was the voice of Drut. The code in the game was coded by Don Priestley on the ZX Spectrum. This is a ZX Spectrum game, and what it's doing is running in the ZX Spectrum emulator. That's why it's running so slowly. That's why also we have Cully Clash. There was no Cully Clash on the Commodore 64, but because they've run this in an emulator, it runs just a bit slower, just like the Dizzy games. And other conversions which released the emulator treatment from Don Priestley were Popeye, by Piranha, Flunky, and also Through the Trapdoor, which was the sequel to this game. 
You can see one of the slimes, I've dropped that and that ran under the floorboards into the storeroom. Unfortunately I can't put that into the cauldron, but what we can do is put that into the tin and take the tin up to the gallery and drop the tin or tip out the tin into the cauldron. That's another one of the slimes, we'll need two more to complete this mission. The music in this game was created by David Dunn, and you might remember David from Chiller, also Finders Keepers, and he went on to Star Trek Rebel Universe, and also Tornado Low Level for Ocean. Just collecting now those slimes, we can now drop those into the jar and then once the jar is full we can take those back to the cauldron and that's the first half of the mission completed for the boiled slimes. We still haven't got as far as the eyeball crush but you've seen that the eyeballs have grown and we're just ready to throw those into the vat in the storeroom and then we'll need the jumping thing from the trapdoor to jump on the vat. We'll then need to put the bottle in front of this vat you can see here that will give us a bottle of eyeball crush. But for the moment we're trying to get the boiled slimes so we can drop the slimes in from here or we can drop in the entire item and that's all we need to complete that mission. So now we have four boiled slimes and half of the time limit it's time to get the monster from the trapdoor and it's the fire breather and it's important to place the vat in the right place at this point and it's also important to place the cauldron in the right place at this point and I find that if you place that to the right of the trapdoor you can then bung the cauldron straight into the dumbwaiter and send that up to the thing once it's boiled if you place it to the left of the trapdoor you'll find an easier time hopefully trying to get the monster back down the trapdoor but you can also kill the monster with the crusher and the fire breathing monster you have to kill I think with the crusher and we've not really seen the crusher let's move the vat into this corner which you'll see later on was the wrong thing to do and now we've got an eyeball there let's release the fire breather and let's hope uh oh we've released the wrong monster by mistake that's the jumping monster now we'll have to wait for that thing to jump all over the screen, open up the trapdoor, and wait for it to fall through it. The jumping monster is an easy monster to get rid of because he will eventually jump down the trapdoor and you'll need to do that when he's doing the eyeball crush. If you place the vat on the trapdoor and the bottle next to it, he will then crush the eyeballs. Give us that. But what we really need is this guy, and this guy is a menace because if we get in contact with his fire, we'll die. to stand to the left of the cauldron to make the cauldron boil and maybe that thing flashes if we can get the cauldron in the right place. Trying to lure the monster into the right place isn't working at this point. So let's just go through those scores. The Lemon 64 crew gave this game currently 7.5 out of 10. Commodore user awarded the game 80%. Your Commodore awarded this 80%, Commodore Force gave this game 85%, and Zap64 awarded it 89%, which gives the average score of 8 out of 10. I think this game has charm, and it was quite fun back in the day working out the puzzles of trying to get all these things going and doing the tasks and on the 64 version it forces you to do those almost in a random order so the eggs is the easiest one followed by the eyeball crush and as you've seen the slimes is one of the hardest basically because you have to get the fire breather in the right place so you can see me trying my best to get the cauldron into the next room but if we die 
Or if there is a worm in the way or a monster in the way, we'll be unable to move that cauldron and we'll have to get onto the precise layer of the level in order to push that left and right. So you can see if we'd have pushed it onto this screen, it would have been handy for the dumb waiter and that's probably what we had to do. Trying to do it the other way around is practically impossible and it's very difficult to get rid of the thing without crushing it. So whilst you see me doing that, let's just play some music and hopefully fast forward this into the next section. Hello children! Wanna hear a nice bedtime story? <laughs> Unfortunately, we are stuck due to a glitch in this game and a glitch with the foreground and background and I'm now stuck. So, almost we got through four out of the five missions and then there's just the end mission where you have to raise the crusher three times and put the safe under the crusher and then you'll get your money. So, thank you for viewing this play guide and review to this crazy and quite special game by Piranha and I'll see you again in another one sometime soon. Thank you. Oh,